Today we're going to look at type 2 of graphing hyperbolas. Type 2 looks a little bit different than type 1 and there's just a few different rules. So just a reminder, we did type 1 on the previous video and type 1 looked like um, a over x minus h plus k. And the minus h told you how much the hyperbola moved left or right, which shifted the vertical asymptote left or right. K showed you how much the hyperbola shifted up or down, which told you how the horizontal asymptote shifted up or down. Now we're going to look at type 2. Type 2 has an x on the top and the bottom. So notice type A or type 1, we had a number in the top. And if we go back to these examples on the previous page, we always had just a number on top and an X on the bottom. In type two, we have an X on the top. So the rules are a little bit different. So let's look at number one, Y equals two X plus three over X plus four. Let's try to figure out how we can see these hyperbola or how we can see the, um, the, ver the vertical and horizontal asymptotes in the equation. So this one appears to have a vertical asymptote right here. And that is at x equals negative 4. So where can we see negative 4 in the equation? That is still where the bottom equals 0. So the opposite of the number on the bottom or the number that would make the bottom equal 0. So that has not changed. That is exactly the same as type 1. So your vertical asymptote is going to be the number that makes the bottom of the fraction equal 0 or like the opposite of the number. That also means your domain is x can't equal negative 4. Okay, our horizontal asymptote is here at x equals 2, uh, at y equals 2. Horizontal, so y equals. Now, if you look in this equation, there is a 2 right here. But what I want you to realize is that there's a 1 in front of the x on the bottom. So if we look at the numbers in front of the x's, the coefficients of the x's, in this thing right here, a divided by c, that is going to be your horizontal asymptote. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2, which means our range is y can't equal 2. Okay, let's try number two. Number two, I want us to look at the equation and find the horizontal and vertical asymptote and then kind of prove it to ourselves by looking at the picture. So vertical asymptote first. Where would the bottom equal zero? The bottom would equal zero when x is two. So let's look. Is there a vertical asymptote at two? There is. Horizontal asymptote is the coefficients. So there's a 1 in front of the x on the bottom. We've got negative 3 over 1. So our horizontal asymptote should be at y equals negative 3. And sometimes these hyperbolas are spread out enough that if you don't know how to find that horizontal asymptote in the equation, it can be a little tough to see it on the graph. So it's worth knowing how to find it from the equation and not just relying on the graph. So y can't equal negative 3 is our range. Okay, and then this just sums it up. Now, sometimes there is a number in front of the x on the bottom. So we can't just say that the vertical asymptote is the opposite number. The vertical asymptote occurs where cx plus d equals 0. So put the bottom of the fraction equal to zero and solve it. That's where your vertical asymptote is. Your horizontal asymptote is the A value divided by the C value. So let's find the horizontal and the vertical asymptote of the following. Horizontal asymptote first. We need to know where 5x minus 1 is going to equal zero. Add 1 to both sides. Divide both sides by 5. The horizontal asymptote sorry, the vertical asymptote. You guys really got to correct me when I make these mistakes. The vertical asymptote is x equals one fifth. Do you see why I'm having you do this one without graphing it? Because that would not be very easy to graph. The horizontal asymptote, y equals, 
is going to be the coefficients, so 3 fifths. Okay, pause the video and try number 4 and number 5 by yourself. See if you can find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes for number 4 and number 5, then we'll try number 6 together. Pause it, pause it. Okay, the vertical asymptote for number 4 is where x plus 1 equals 0. That's one of the easier ones to solve. The horizontal asymptote is the coefficient. So there's a 1 in front of this number at the bottom, 4 over 1. Your horizontal asymptote would be y equals 4. Number 5, your vertical asymptote exists where the bottom equals 0. So take a moment and solve that. x is negative 5 halves. Now the shortcut is take the opposite of the number that's being added or subtracted divided by the coefficient and that's some of you can can see that shortcut some of you just put it equal to zero and solve and that's totally fine your horizontal asymptote is i may have tricked you here notice there's no x on top this is actually oh this this is actually a type one so the horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 0. And it actually doesn't say find the horizontal asymptote. It just asks where would these have vertical asymptotes. So I just did extra work. Number 6 is a little bit different. And I want to show you what this looks like in the graph. So 3 divided by um, x plus 6, x minus 7. And I put all of that in parentheses. This is kind of cool. It's a double hyperbola. There are two vertical asymptotes, and the vertical asymptotes are going to be at x equals negative 6 and at x equals 7. So these two sets of parentheses give you two vertical asymptotes. And I probably won't make you graph any of those, but it's just interesting to see that if you have more than one factor on the bottom that could equal 0, you're going to get more vertical asymptotes. And that'll make a double, triple, quadruple asymptote hyperbola, which is kind of cool. Okay, to graph type 2, we're really going to go about this the same way that we did yesterday. We are going to start by finding your vertical and your horizontal asymptote. Then we're going to select two numbers on either side of the vertical asymptote and then use the table of values to graph. And I will do the first one using the graphing calculator, the second one using Desmos, and then the third one, we'll figure it out when we get there. So the vertical asymptote is where the bottom equals zero. So x minus three equals zero, that would be at positive three. So our vertical asymptote is at three, which means our domain is x can't equal three, and I put that vertical asymptote on the graph. My horizontal asymptote is the coefficients. There's ones in front of both of those. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1, which means our range is y can't equal 1. That looks funny right there. Let me fix that. And I put my horizontal asymptote of 1 on the graph. Okay, we want two numbers on either side of that vertical asymptote. So our vertical asymptote is at 3. I want 4 and 5. And then on the other side, we've got 3, so we want 2 and 1. And it's totally fine that these numbers aren't in order. You don't have to have your table of values in numerical order. That's okay. All right, in the graphing calculator, you do need to put parentheses around the top and parentheses around the bottom. So parentheses, x minus 6, close your parentheses, divided by parentheses, x minus 3, close your parentheses. You can graph this to take a look at it. There's a pretty hyperbola right there. Second graph takes you to your table. And I want I need to move this down. Remember, you can shift this around, and there you can see your um, you can see your your vertical asymptote of three. Okay, so four 
negative 2, 5, negative 0. 0.5, 2, 4, 1, 2.5, 4, negative 2, 5, negative 0. 0.5. And if you wanted to graph some more, like we could grab that 6 is 0, 7 is 0. 0.25. Like we could grab more points if we wanted to. It's pretty easy to look at the graphing calculator and put those points on your graph. 2, 4, 1, 2.5, and then I'll look at my calculator and see that 0 is 2, and maybe get one more. Negative 1 is 1.75. Just gives me a little bit better idea of the shape of that hyperbola. Remember to approach your asymptotes. Don't cross them, and don't curve back away from them either. And there is a pretty perfect hyperbola right there. Number eight, let's try using Desmos. So go ahead and get out uh, Desmos. So I got out a web browser. I'm going to desmos.com. Start graphing. Okay. This one is f of x equals or y equals. You can use y equals or f of x equals. I do want to show you that f of x also works if you want to. We need to basically put this in the same way we would in a graphing calculator. So we want to do parentheses x plus 1, close our parentheses, divided by, and it makes, when you hit that division key, it makes that fraction. And then parentheses x plus 2. And there's our hyperbola. Now if you go back to our notes, before we even look at the graph, we should be able to figure out the vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, domain, and range. So our vertical asymptote is where the bottom equals 0. So that's going to be at negative 2, which means x can't equal negative 2 as our domain. Our horizontal asymptote is the coefficients. And if I look here, maybe I'll just highlight it with yellow. The numbers in front are 1's. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So y can't equal 1. x is negative 2, so I put my vertical asymptote at negative 2. y is 1. I am going to want negative 1 and 0. That will give me the two numbers um, on, if I show with my mouse, the two numbers on the right side of the asymptote. On the left side, if this is negative 2, we want negative 3 and negative 4. In Desmos, to get those numbers, click the little wheel. So see that again? There's the little wheel. And then click this little table looking thing, and that converts it to a table. And I see negative 1 and 0. I do not see negative 3 and negative 4. So you just click down here and type in negative 3. I want negative 3. You can hit enter or down or whatever, or just click underneath it. Type in the numbers that you want. I could also type in negative 5 if I wanted another point. And when you put those points in, it also puts them on the graph, which is kind of nice to see those points on that parabola. Okay, so negative 1, 0, 0, 0.5, negative 3, 2, negative 4, 1.5. And let's graph these. Negative 1, 0, negative, or 0, positive 0.5, negative 3, 2, and negative 4, 1.5, oops, 1.5. I would like you to pause the video and try number 9 on your own. I'm going to pause my video, do all of number 9, and then I'll come back on for about 10 seconds to show you number 9. So pause the video, try number 9. Okay, this one's actually pretty spread out on the graph. Um, that first point, 5.511 didn't work, so I made another little table of values and just recorded a couple of extra points to help me graph this a little bit easier.